in an energy. Oh boy. Um, I have to um, put in all the information. I don't know how to do that. I don't know where it is. So I'm just doing a, a cryptic. And if you could paste that in later, that would be great. So I'm sharing this to my page and the page is there. <clears throat> and I think I'm ready. <sighs> Namaste. My name is Todd Norian, and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga. Welcome. Welcome to Ashaya Yoga for Body, Mind, and Heart. Ashaya means abode of the heart. And the Ashaya method is really all about bringing a level of acceptance, compassion, embrace, and integration to the body, mind, and heart, to our physical nature, our mental and emotional nature, and our spiritual nature. And one of the Tantra teachings is that we are born from freedom into freedom, that we're already free. Um, but that usually gets covered up, like we can't really tell that we're free um, because we cover it over with so much other things. We lose our focus. There's a lot of fear. A lot of times there's anxiety and many, many other things that are like the clouds that move across the sky of consciousness. So we need to have a practice that can help anchor us and help us to really be at peace inside. Through our own doing, we create our own sort of mini prison here that keeps us locked out of the freedom. There's a saying that, that in Tantra that is, um, the only thing in the way between you and grace is you. So a big part of the practice is how to get ourselves out of the way. And not that we're gonna kick ourselves out of the way, it's how to do it with acceptance compassion, integration, and to understand that we may not ever get rid of all of our fear. But that's not really the goal. The goal is not to let our fear stop us, to courageously move forward in our lives. So one of the secrets to being connected to this freedom, which is our true nature, is that in order to be free, you need to be stable first. That stability is a requirement. Um, there's a phrase that goes like, are we bound beings seeking freedom or are we free beings seeking boundaries? And most of the early forms of yoga is, oh, we're bound and we want to transcend and get out of here to get the freedom. You know, you get freedom after you die. But then Tantra comes along and says, no, we're already free. So what do you want to bind yourself to? We're looking for ways to create healthy self boundaries. And when we do that, then we bind ourselves to what our heart most deeply desires, and that's usually what comes to pass. Uh, if we don't bind ourselves to that, then usually what we don't want binds itself to us. So, and when you have a balance of stability and freedom, then your heart opens, and that's when you recognize your truest nature, which is joy and which pulses with freedom. So take a comfortable seat now, Elevate your hips. So sit up on one or two blankets. Manually turn your thigh bones in. Just grab a hold of your thighs with your hands. Roll them inwardly. That generates a low back curve. Then draw your tailbone down. <clears throat> Join your index fingers and thumbs. This is a mudra called Jnana Mudra, Mudra of Knowledge. And we do it palms down because we want to embody the knowledge of the self. Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, breathe.
bring yourself fully present. Enjoy the sweetness of the breath, the smoothness of the breath. Let your breath be full. So when you inhale, your side ribs grow long, your collarbones smile upward. Take the head of your arm bones back, palate back, occiput up. It's the roof of the mouth slides back. Occiput is the back of your skull that goes up. Place your palate directly over your pelvis. So you align head, heart, and body. And then breathe in and down, all the way down, as though you could breathe into the floor of your pelvis. Each inhalation now, expand the chest with more and more freedom. And as you exhale, let your hips settle with stability. Repeat this for a few breaths, freedom on the inhalation, stability on the exhalation. And now begin to find the place in the middle where freedom and stability come together. And let that be in your heart. Then breathe into your heart and set an intention for yourself for the next 45 minutes. What do you want to receive? What's something good that you would like to bind to yourself? And then bring your palms together in front of your heart. And take a deep breath in and chant Om. freedom in your heart, gently bow. Are you ready? Open your eyes. Namaste. Welcome back. All right, please join me in the standing position at the top of your mat. I'll be there in just a moment. Come stand, bring your feet parallel, hip distance apart, palms in front of the heart. Open to the bigger energy now to soften your skin. Take delight in just being present and feel your feet on the earth. Try to draw in the stability from the earth and actually lift your toes. When your toes go up, your muscles start to hug the bones. Bind yourself to the self inside to the freedom that's there. Hug muscles to bones, take your thigh bones back, draw your tailbone in, and then inhale, sweep your arms out to the side and up. Exhale, fold forward, lead with your heart, hinge at the hips, bend your knees a little, touch the floor, but with ego talons, that's just on the fingers, or you can use blocks just like this. Any level of the block can work. Take a couple of deep breaths. We get the legs to stretch a little more. Isometrically, pull your heels backwards. Heels backwards. Yeah, make sure your feet stay parallel. And then keeping your legs stable, inhale, lift your heart halfway forward with freedom. And then exhale, bow and touch stability with freedom. Inhale, lift your heart with the longing to grow, to become more free. Exhale and bow. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bow. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, lunge your left foot back, toes curled under. <clears throat> Hold the pose for a moment. Soften and breathe and then hug your legs to the middle. Here's how much stability I want you to try. Can you lift your hands an inch off the floor? Yes, now you have to really hold yourself with your legs, hold. Then keep the stability, touch the floor, and breathe. Take your left thigh a little higher toward the sky, pull your tailbone in. 
And then bring your left knee all the way down to the floor. Walk your hands out to the left side to about 45 degrees. Begin to squeeze, try to hug your shins toward the, toward the middle. So your right shin hugs to the middle, left shin hugs to the middle. And keeping that wide in your thighs apart. Take your right hip a little more to the right, left hip to the left. And then can you come down onto your forearms? And if you can't quite reach all the way down, get a block and you can bring your forearms down onto the block. Full, deep breaths. When your breath is calm and relaxed, freedom flows. Freedom is a little bit like water. It's soft. It opens you, goes around obstacles. Melt the back of the heart. See if you can release your chest closer to the floor. Inhale, slowly come up, and then walk your hands back, roll up onto the right heel, root the heel and isometrically pull backwards. Keep your tongue inside your mouth. <laughs> it's a big stretch, root. And there's a technique that I call shins in, thighs wide. So if you put your right hand on your outer right shin and hug that straight in toward the middle, this muscle here, the shin muscle, and also the peroneus muscles gets activated with the little toe. So just spread your fifth toe wide if you can. Hug your shin with stability and then widen your right thigh out to the right. So you roll the thigh in and you widen it energetically to the right. So we want freedom in the hip stimulated by the stability in the shin. So it's both and both at the same time. Then pull your tailbone in, bow. You can keep those actions, touch the floor, bring your forehead a little closer to the knee and exhale. Bend the right knee, step your left foot forward. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, lunge right foot, hold. And let's do that little trick, lift your hands. And now you have to stabilize your legs. Muscles work, it's a really good workout. Otherwise you fall over. Maintain stability and then lightly touch. So stability keeps you anchored, keeps you grounded. That supports your freedom to go even more free without getting lost. Right thigh to the sky, pull your tail in. Outer left hip crease goes back and down. From your pelvis now, push energetically back through the right big toe ball mount and heel and through the left shin. Then lower your right knee down and walk your hand slowly over to the right. Come out about 45 degrees. Bend your elbows, forearms down, or you can use a block. And then Elevate your forearms a good four inches, much easier. So you have to find where your personal edge is and then create a healthy self boundary not to go over the edge. You stay on this side of it. And once you've got the position of your arms, with stability, hug your shins with freedom, push your thighs apart. Keep your right heel perpendicular, actually zip from the little toe up to the outer heel. Hug your shins, maintain that and widen your thighs. Freedom is a birthright and through yoga and other practices, we reclaim the freedom that's been lost, that is originally ours. So breathe freedom. Bind yourself to it, hug your shins, widen your thighs, and then melt the back of your heart toward the floor more. See if you can accept, let go, and be in the present moment now. There's nowhere else you need to be. Inhale. 
down, slowly come up. Just had to change a little setting there. And walk your hands back, come onto the left heel, root the heel and isometrically pull backwards. Root your thigh down toward the floor. And then remember the fifth toe, spread the little toe, and that activates stability in the shin. Put your left hand on the outer left shin and just hug it to the middle. And then widen your left thigh and hip to the left. You'll feel sort of an energetic resistance, and that is so valuable. That's the kind of stretch we want. And this actually opens up the hip joint from the center of the joint and all the muscles around it in a very safe and protected way. That's what stability does. Okay, keep the actions, touch the floor and then bow. Keep tongue in mouth, fold, enjoy. There's the stretch. Excellent. Bend your knee, place your hands, come into all fours. Look at your hands, get the wrist creases straight ahead, center of the wrist as wide as the outer shoulders, claw your pads and roots, and then create stability with your hands. Just pull your palms toward each other, but the heart stays free. Keep the heart soft, but all the muscles around the heart work. Then walk your knees back a few inches, curl your toes, Go to downward dog pose, but don't change your arms. Keep your arms, they're like pillars. They don't move. But your heart is free, so melt the heart between the pillars. And lift your armpits up more. It's like you create an altar for the heart. And then melt the heart. Bend your knees. Roll your thighs in. Lift your sitting bones. Create a low back curve. And then draw your tailbone and from your heart, push back down through your hands and from your heart, root the base of your shins back. Expand, freedom expands us. It takes us to the boundary and then you expand the boundary. And that pretty much describes the path of the heart, the growth of the heart. It's good. Continue to breathe. Wonderful. All right, step by step, walk in. Come to your hands, root down through your feet, sweep your arms out to the side, and come up. Continue to root and stabilize as you rise up, and then exhale, arms down to your sides, palms in front, and just breathe and experience the balance of stability and freedom. It just feels so delightful. All right, hands on your hips, exhale, step back with your left foot, just lunge it back. Step back a little further now, so your knees over your ankle, square your hips to the front, inhale, arms up, and from your pelvis, root into the earth, and from your hips, rise up more. Now the more you root, the more you can rise. The more stability you have, the more possibility for freedom. Even arch back a little bit. Good. All right, exhale, step forward, take a deep breath, and exhale, right leg back, Find your balance. Step back just a little bit more. So your knee is over your ankle, hips square. And then scissor the legs like a scissor. So the front leg pulls back, back leg pulls forward energetically. Inhale, arms up. Lift your right thigh up behind you more. Draw down through your tailbone. And then from your pelvic core, push through your feet and rise up more from pelvis up through your fingers. Breathe in and down, right into the hips. 
draw up energy from the earth, pull it up through your feet into the pelvis, stabilize, and then radiate back out in all directions with freedom. Now, exhale and step the back foot forward. Take a big breath. Good. Take a wide stance now. Bring your feet parallel and stretch so that your wrists, your ankles are as wide as your wrists are wide. So just eyeball it, feet parallel. <sighs> Remember the bigger energy, take a nice breath. Then hands to your hips. Turn your right foot all the way out, 90 degrees. Hug your legs to the middle and then bend your right leg into a square. Bring your thigh as close to parallel as you can. The tendency, as soon as you bend the right knee, is the left hip pops forward. So, hug your legs to the middle to stabilize, then thigh bones back, and take the right half of your pelvis and left half of the pelvis back at the same rate. Keeping the inner thighs back, pull your tailbone under. That's it, stretch your arms. Look out over your fingers and push your arms down like you're up to your shoulders in a flowing river. And push your hands down into the river. There's a, a beautiful song, the lyrics just keep going through my head all day today is, the river she delivers me to the ocean. In the ocean is where freedom lies. Let the breath be the river. Turn your right palm up, left hand to the back thigh, crescent arm. Stretch even more, continue. Stretch as much as you can, as long as it feels good. And then inhale, come up. And now stretch the right leg straight and pull up on the, on the legs, maybe even get the kneecaps to pull up a little bit. And then hinge from your right hip, go deep in the crease of the hip and stretch your right arm out. Then left hand to your hip, bring your right hand to your shin and then bring it over to the left. So out in front of you, bend forward, grab yourself a block if you can't reach. And when your torso goes in this direction now, hug your shins and then push your thigh bones back. The whole point when your torso comes out in this direction, it enables your hips to go back. So it's more of a hip stretch than a back stretch. With your thighs back, pull your tailbone in, and then bring your right hand to the outside of the right shin or on a block. Turn your heart to the sky, left arm up. With stability, pull in from feet and fingers. It's like pulling into the core a star into the pelvis and then with freedom from the pelvis just radiate like a supernova radiate out in all directions through your spine your neck your head keep your breath calm and then root your feet down to come up inhale hands to hips Turn your feet parallel. Take a breath. Hmm. Square your right foot, turn your left foot open. Hug your legs and then bend. Stretch your arms, warrior two. Check out your left knee so it's directly above the ankle. And it's very tricky, but the center of the knee should align with toe two and three. And what happens is as soon as we start to take the thigh bones back, here, put your hands on your hips for a sec. So remember, when you bend the knee, the back hip juts forward. So roll both thighs in and stick your butt back. And when that happens, you'll notice the knee just uh, goes off midline. So it's gonna go over to the big toe. So once your thighs are back, pull your tailbone in. Now set up your knee, so the center of the left knee is in line with toe two and three. Stretch your arms, look out over your fingers, 
Lift your heart a bit more, shoulder blades flow down the back. And stay calm and steady, even in the intensity of the stretch. And then turn your left palm up, crescent arc. Inhale, come back up. Now stretch your left leg straight. You're welcome. Pull up on your kneecaps, hinge from the hip. Stretch more, hinge deeper into the hip. Then right hand on your hip, left hand over to the right. Find a block if you need it. Lean your torso to the side and then move your thigh bones back more. Big stretch in the legs. Now draw your tail in, left hand to the outside of the left shin, heart goes up, right arm goes up. With stability, hug muscles to bones, and then with freedom from the bones, radiate out circumferentially from all the core lines in the body, the legs, the arms, radiate out from the center of the bone like the marrow, out through the muscle and skin into the universe with freedom. A little variation on this side, stretch your right arm over the ear and reach long for a little more freedom here. And then root down through your feet, inhale and come up, hands to hips. Parallel your feet and then walk in. Good. Hug your legs, fold forward. And we'll just take a moment for a symmetrical stretch here. And then bend your knees. Good. And set your hands and come up into plank pose. So you walk your feet pretty far back. Shoulders are over the wrists. Hold. And then take thighs back, tailbone in. Hold. Lift the sides of your throat up. Sides, the ears go up, heart is soft. Feel the stability, just hug palms toward each other with stability, but keep the heart free. Now knees down, slowly come through Chaturanga Dandasana, all the way down. Point your toes, hug your shins, squeeze your legs, tail in, come up Cobra. And it's not just any cobra, it's a stable cobra. You claw and pull your palms isometrically backwards till you feel your shoulder blades hug. It's the impression that life has your back. Universe has your back. Let your heart open with freedom. Good. Exhale down. Now we'll come up into an unusual pose called Kermyasana, it's the salamander. So go up into cobra, but then twist to your right, look to the right, and crawl your right knee forward. That's the salamander part. Roll onto your left hip more, flex the left foot, and then push your left foot back as though you pushed into a wall, and lean your left ribs forward. You can come down onto your forearms if you need to. Lengthen your ribs more and more and more. And exhale. Release, bring your arms down by your sides. Rest for a moment. Enjoy the earth. Place your palms again for side two. Inhale, cobra, twist left, and then crawl left knee forward and roll onto the side of your right hip. Thigh bones back, tail in, and then push right foot back, right ribs forward. You have to kind of feel your way into this stretch. So as you claw your hands, flex your feet, hug muscles, release the ribs more. Stay free in the ribs and the heart and then stretch, push your right foot to the back edge of your mat, right ribs to the front. 
and exhale. Release, fold your hands in front like a pillow and just turn your head to the side, rest. All right, place your hands under your shoulders, come up, lie on your back. Okay, one or two more stretches. This one is Suki Randrasana, Eye of the Needle. So lie on your back, bend your knees. <clears throat> Cross your right ankle over the left knee. And then pick up the left foot, shin parallel to the floor, 90 degrees, and then pull the left thigh in. Reach your hands around the back of the left leg and pull in. Flex your feet, press your right knee away. And here's the trick in this one, how to get a low back curve, how to free up the low back from the floor. So we never want to flatten the natural curves of the spine. So we need a low back curve. Take the inner thighs straight back, straight back. And put pressure more at the base of your sacrum rather than the top of the sacrum. That's the low back area and see if you can get a little space underneath your lower back. Okay, to do that, you have to open your hips. Now press your right knee away, take a breath, and exhale, release. It's a really good hip stretch. Switch, left ankle on the right knee, hold the right thigh, pull in. And breathe. Now what happened to the low back curve? Okay, let's try. Inner rotate your thighs. You may have to release your right leg more. Inner rotate. Now press your left knee away from you. More. More. Try to find the place where freedom and stability connect. There's a little space there, a gap, a threshold. Go there and dwell for a breath or two. And exhale, release. Please roll to your right side. And come up to sitting. Stretch your legs out. Grab hold of your thighs and just manually roll them in and place your hands behind. And if you can pull the low back in and you have a curve, then you won't need to sit up on a blanket. But if your low back is sort of slouching back this way, then it's best to elevate your hips. You'll have uh, an easier time getting a low back curve. It's also healthier for your back. So low back is in. Then right knee, you're gonna bend and Cross it over the left leg. This is half Gomukhasana, cow facing pose. So we're gonna do Ekapada Gomukha, that's one leg cow facing Pashimottanasana. So when you're ready, inhale, lift, lengthen your spine, exhale and fold. Walk your hands further forward. Continue to try to arch your back even as you fold forward. Keep it at about 45 degrees. And then shoulders back. And then at this point, extend your heart more fully towards your foot so you get more length. And each time you fold a little further, I want you to match that with the length that you get in your spine. Then hold the little toe edge of your left foot and twist to your left. Inhale, come up, bring your right hand behind you, left wrist over the uh, right knee this way, thumb down, and then push like a backhand, tennis backhand, against your knee with leverage to twist to the right. Inhale, rise, exhale, twist. Good, inhale, come out, switch. Right leg extended, 
Bend your left knee over. Try to create a low back curve. And then flex your right foot. Root the right heel down. Yeah, that's gonna stabilize the whole leg. And then fold. Walk your hands forward parallel to your shin. Forward bends are interesting because they take a lot of work, but you also have to surrender. So work to keep a low back curve and then surrender the heart. Bring the head of your arm bones back. For every inch you fold, I want you to go an inch further forward with length. Hold the little toe edge of your right foot with your left hand and twist. You'll feel a lot of sensation. As soon as you pull back on the little toe edge of your foot, which is the earth side of the foot, It'll stabilize your leg. <laughs> It'll either stabilize it or paralyze it. I'm not sure which. Okay, inhale, come up. Now, lean back on your left hand, right hand, wrist, thumb down on the left knee. Inhale, rise up, and then get leverage. Push on your left knee and twist. Push, inhale, rise, exhale, twist. And then inhale, release. Okay, perfect. Bring the soles of your feet together. Hold your ankles, curl your toes back. Um, it may be easier to put your hands right back behind you. So do that. And push from the center of your pelvis straight out through the lines of both legs. Don't worry about going down. Just stretch straight out. Good. Hold under your knees. Bring your knees back up. Awesome. All right. Get a couple blankets for meditation. We're going to sit. We'll have about a five minute meditation and then five minute shavasana. So it's coming. So you can take any seat, including in a chair, and whether you're sitting on the floor or in a chair, manually turn your thigh bones in. And you'll see how much easier it is to create a low back curve. Thighs back, that creates the freedom. Then pull your tailbone in for a little more stability. Join your index fingers and thumbs, palms down. I like this mudra because it creates a circle. Index fingers are individual nature. It's maybe the part of us that's limited, but the thumb represents the sky. So the limited self touches the infinite self and is influenced. Palms down, close your eyes, sit tall. Take a couple of deep breaths, calm yourself. And inhale, let your belly, your rib cage, and your chest expand with freedom. When you exhale, just release whatever is no longer needed. If there's any stress or anxiety that kind of hung on, now's the time to let it go fully, completely. Rest your awareness lightly on the altar of your heart. Open your inner ears and listen. Become sensitive to the subtle waves of vibration. Sometimes you can hear or sense the presence of grace in a whisper. And then out of the stillness, we'll practice silent mantra meditation. 
So we use the mantra Ham Sa, which means I am that. Ham is I am. That is the universe or freedom itself. We'll coordinate it with the breath to begin. So inhale the silent thought Ham. Exhale the silent thought Sa. Inhale Ham. Exhale, sa. And continue in this way. So you've just produced the thought of the mantra. You place it on the breath. Ultimately, the mantra is independent of any breath rhythm. So continue with the thought of the mantra. And whenever your mind wanders, as it will, just gently, effortlessly bring it back to Hamsa. Gently release the mantra. And I invite you now to come lie down on your back. And come into Shavasana. Get really, really comfortable and warm. Once you've found a comfortable position, close your eyes. Take two or three deep breaths through your whole body. Savor the breath. The breath is the key to freedom. Now when you exhale, allow your muscles to melt away from the bones. And let your bones descend deeper into the earth. Actually feel the weight of the bones descend. And now allow all of your internal organs to sink to the back side of the body. And then 
begin to relax the different parts of your body. Start with the feet, and then the shins, and thighs. Relax your hips and buttocks. Relax your low belly. Lower back. Middle back. Upper back. Shoulders. Arms relaxed. Relax your wrists, hands, palms, fingers. fingertips and the spaces between your fingers. Relax your neck, base of the skull. Release your jaw, your tongue. Allow your lips to rest softly on your teeth. Cheeks soft. Let your ears drape. Relax around your eyes. And then release the weight of your eyes down toward the back of the skull. As though you could toss two smooth round stones into a pond and they sink all the way to the sandy bottom. into you. She becomes you. And very gradually begin to return, offer thanks to the freedom that you felt and to this wonderful feeling of relaxation that you can return to anytime you wish. And then gently stretch, draw your knees in, roll to your right side. And then 
When you're ready, come on up to sitting. And we'll sit for a moment. Sit tall, close your eyes. See if you can move closer to your heart. Sit near and listen. Watch. And receive a loving message from your heart to you, a message of freedom. find the place in the middle between stability and freedom where your heart bursts open and you recognize your true nature which is supremely free vibrating with the highest bliss and joy and then bring your palms together in front imagine one hand stability one hand freedom and they join perfect balance at the heart and gratitude for this time to practice. Let's take a breath and channel. Om. The freedom in me bows to the freedom in you. Namaste. And may there be freedom everywhere. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.